6.30 a.m. Saturday morning. Today is the first scheduled air show of the season. At dawn, the Thunderbird crew is already at work, preparing for the afternoon's main event. Tucson is one of the earliest scheduled air shows of the season, and its proximity to Nellis makes it an ideal shakedown cruise. Although Davis Mountain Air Force Base is a modern fighter training center, it's best known as the storage center for obsolete aircraft. These proud planes have outlived their usefulness to America's military. They've been replaced with newer ones that fly higher, faster, and farther. Over 3,000 of these old warbirds sit in the dry Arizona air at Davis Mountain. Some will be used for spare parts. Others await their final flight as a pilotless drone, a target for today's advanced weaponry. The first 707 helped introduce the world to commercial jet travel and now awaits her final journey to Washington's Air and Space Museum. There's a feeling of excitement in the air as the crowd pours into the base. And it's not just the planes. It's a beautiful day to spend in the sunshine for the entire family. A day to see and touch aircraft that most people only get to read about in books and magazines. A performance by the Thunderbirds always attracts a huge audience, and today is no exception. Over 100,000 people are on hand to see the team's first official air show of the season. Men, women, boys, girls. The crowd's a true cross-section of America. All right, let's get going here. The Thunderbirds are always the grand finale of an air show. While the acts that precede them perform for the crowds, the officers of the team meet for a final pre-flight briefing. With over 100,000 spectators, nothing can be left All right, to chance. Any questions on those? Like I say, I say All okay. aspects of the upcoming demonstration are reviewed. The logistics officer, or loggy, reports on wind conditions above the field. The pilots review safety procedures. Safe ejection areas are memorized. We have it aboard on the for the unlikely event of a flame out at low altitudes. Let's make it a good safe one. Remember, uh, there is no pressure to, uh, to complete a maneuver that's not set up properly, abort the maneuver. A lot of people will be watching us and are cheering for us. So let's make it a good, safe one and go out and do a good one. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Service Energy's third position fly. My name is Fred Gary, Henry, Lemon Strangey, United States Air Force, Thunderbird. So Service Energy is now all eyes are on the Thunderbird pilots as the last three months of practice and all the team effort are about to be tested. The Thunderbirds are a military squadron performing at a military base, but the FAA has jurisdiction because civilians are present. The FAA monitors the show for both the show line and the fact that nobody's out there, and for the air show itself, that nothing gets too loose or uh, too low or anything of that sort. As the team takes off in full afterburner, each of the jets develops over 24,000 pounds of thrust. Translated into horsepower, each F-16 is more powerful than five diesel locomotives. The commander leader lines the Thunderbirds up for the first pass by the crowd, the traditional four-ship diamond. To keep the show at a fast-moving pace, whenever the formation exits show center, the number five and six jets perform their exciting solos. This maneuver looks like fun, but it's actually performed to demonstrate a pilot's ability to control a high-performance aircraft at near-minimum controllable airspeeds. There's never more than a few seconds between maneuvers. During the demonstration, the pilots fly along an imaginary show line. For safety reasons, the show line is at least 1,500 feet away from the crowd line, and those distances are carefully monitored.
For obvious reasons, the Thunderbirds don't break the sound barrier during their air show demonstration. But on some of the solo vehicles, the speed is very close. To the earthbound crowd, many of the routines look like spectacular daredevil stunts. But they're actually part of every Air Force pilot's training. The Thunderbirds just fly them lower and tighter. They call this the crossover break, and to the startled spectators, it looks like the jets were flying side by side. Some of the simplest maneuvers, like this slow roll, are the hardest to perfect. Several times during the performance, all six jets joined together for breathtaking examples of formation flight. The grand finale of the air show is the bomb burst, and it's a Thunderbird trademark. As the four ship diamond splits apart in a vertical climb, each pilot heads to a different compass point. The solo pilot spirals through the center. From the ground, the smoke trails look like the petals of a giant flower. With careful timing and critical altitude separation, the jets appear to just face each other at the cross of Forty minutes after engine start, the first air show of the season is over. Five minutes later, the 6 f 16s are back on Earth. When the men and women of the Thunderbird team joined the military, they never thought they'd be heroes. But they are. Because they're not just Thunderbirds. They're representatives of the 600,000 men and women who serve their country in the United States Air Force. Tomorrow, the high-tech alternative to nuclear arms is unveiled in a stunning look at the arms revolution. See how fiber optics, sophisticated radar and sensors take the computer age into the combat zone on smart weapons. And Sunday, a southern excavation turns up clues to America's early slavery on digging for slaves. Now stay tuned as Dave Coulier hosts A&E's An Evening at the Improv, next. <laughs> Get the real workers in there, I'm telling you. We don't go anywhere without these guys.